the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. So as we've said, we're testing some new equipment today. For those of you who don't understand why we're having to do this, uh, the designers of our church did a beautiful job understanding Byzantine-style architecture. The dome, the apse, the arches, beautiful stylistic components of a classical Byzantine structure. What unfortunately most modern architects don't do is go back farther into the past, not just to look at the style, but to look at the science of Byzantine architecture. There were people who would attend the church in Hagia Sophia, in Constantinople, with more than 10,000 people present. And the deacon or the bishop or the priest from the altar could be heard clearly everywhere. So the Byzantines knew what they were doing. The problem, as you may understand in our church, is not that you can't hear what's being said, but with the wrong proportions we get an echo. And when you get an echo, you're hearing several syllables all at the same time, and it's hard for your ears to translate to your brain effectively what each of those are. And so we're working to help mitigate that problem. And the solution, the audio experts tell us, is to get the sound as close to you as it, can, it is so we, can't, so we don't have to blast it to you. So the speakers you're seeing are a little more advanced than our, our ones that are over 17 years old now. And they're projecting the sound and trying to have it hit to you where you are. Now you're saying, Father, you're spending a lot of time on acoustics during the sermon. We're really not talking about just acoustics and architecture and physical sound. The relationship between our physical ears, our minds, and our hearts works exactly the same way as our spiritual ears, our spiritual minds, and our hearts. So many times we've talked about the fact that in our misperception of God and even of ourselves, God can seem very far away and sometimes very hard to hear. Or if we hear him, we don't understand what he's saying. There's a lot of distortion, there's echo, there's other sound. But our Orthodox Christian faith tells us something very different. God is not far away. He's not distant, and we don't have to strain to hear him from far away. It's the opposite. Like a good sound system, God speaks to us immediately close to us. There's no distance between him and us. In fact, the beautiful and sometimes frightening thing is that God is not somewhere out there. God is even not just next to me. God has chosen to dwell within us. The temple that God chooses, that God chooses to live in is the human heart. At the very depth of who we are, sometimes deeper than we're even aware. That's where God is, and that's the place from where God speaks. And just like in dealing with acoustical issues, the subject for us and the, it's the situation for us is what is the condition of the heart within which God is speaking? You know, audio experts tell us that you need good sound. If it's just blasting noise, it's very hard to understand what's being said. But everything God says is good. Everything he says is clear. Everything he says is understandable. The only question is, just like speaking loud noise into this church, what's the condition of the heart into which he speaks. Part of the problem we're having is that we took out the old carpet, we put in beautiful marble tile. 
It's beautiful. And in the right proportional structure, it would work just fine. But our hearts sometimes are like going from soft carpet to hard rock. And the scriptures tell us that if we would, if we would, God would turn our hearts of stone into living hearts of flesh, soft, absorbing, comforting, warm, and alive. Sound experts tell us that you can fix problems or work on it. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But the best thing is get your design down from the beginning. There's a church being built at Hillsdale College. And their sound engineer is saying, thank God you came to me now. Because other churches come to me later. And they say, help us fix the problem. So how do we build a good structure in the temple of our heart? It's not going to happen today. Or at least not only today. This church wasn't built in a day. Nothing of importance happens only in a day. The structure of our life will be built throughout our lifetime. And what's good for a building, a good foundation, is good for our souls as well. That's why we, your leaders in the church, will tell you, send your kids to Sunday school. Don't worry how early it is. Don't worry about all those things. Educate them will tell you, don't just trust your church school teachers. Parents are the primary educators of children. So talk to them about what they learn. Read the Bible with them. Talk to them and teach them Bible stories. Bring them to church. All the things we have to do to build a lifelong good and sound structure of our souls. The problem here in hearing me sometimes is echo. We have spiritual echo, not just of the voice of God. The number one, the main job of a Christian, the fathers tell us, is to guard the heart and be careful what we let in and what we keep out. Because whatever comes into us, whatever noise, even neutral noises, when there's too much of it, you can't hear what's good. And so inside all of our hearts, echoing around, bouncing around, are, is all the noise. And let's face it, we live in a noisy society. The internet is always on. The TV, the radio, the music, the talking. It's so hard for us to be in silence. We practice that at the camp with the kids and we say silence is so important. Only when everything else gets silenced can we start to hear the voice of God. They get to about a minute and they start squirming because we have so little quiet and so little silence in our lives. If we're going to hear the voice of God in our hearts, we have to quiet down all the other voices. The prophet Elias the very right icon of our iconostas, heard God speak. Not in the earthquake, not in the whirlwind. Some of you saw the video of that hurricane coming ashore in Texas. Not that mighty wind. God spoke to Elias in the still, small voice. And we're not going to hear God's still, small voice when there's a hurricane of noise from all the noise we fill our lives with. Lastly, sound experts will tell us that there are some things you can do, which is why we're doing this experiment today. A lot harder than designing the building right in the first place, but some things we can do. And that's the good news of a life of repentance. Why do we say, Lord, have mercy over and over and over again? Why are our priests always encouraging us, come to confession, clean your soul, start over? Because life happens. And in the happening of life, too often, too much noise has gotten in. And the walls 
and the floor and the ceiling of our heart has become hardened like stone. So through the life of repentance, through the opportunity to change, we can work on that. Again, it doesn't happen overnight. But the good news is, no matter what has happened to us in life so far, God offers us, as long as there is breath in our lungs, the chance to change. Those who don't understand our orthodox spirituality of repentance say that we sound very depressed. Our priests wear black to remind themselves of their own sins as they go about teaching others. We say, Lord, have mercy. We say the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And especially during our Lenten seasons, we bow down and we prostrate ourselves before God, begging His mercy. But that's not bad news. That's all good news that God gives us a chance to change. You can see how this plays out in today's Gospel. A young rich man comes to Jesus, and with every good intent, he comes kneeling, and he says to him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The best question anyone ever asked anyone. But Jesus immediately understands that he's not going to be listening very well. Jesus replies, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. This man thought he could hear, but he needed to know with whom he was speaking and who he was listening to. Was he ready to hear Jesus, not just as a good teacher, but as the voice of God himself? A little later in the conversation, Jesus answers this question. He says, follow the commandments. The man heard Jesus very clearly. Follow the commandments. But just like sometimes when we're not ready to hear, we listen and we can hear it physically, but we're not ready to accept, sometimes we act and even convince ourselves that we're confused. So the man says to him, which commandments? Jesus, patient with him as he was, quotes some of them. And the man says, I've done all these things. And Jesus says one more thing to him. Go and sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. Did the man hear the wonderful opportunity he was offered? Might have heard it with his ears. For whatever reason, he was not ready to accept it. He heard it wrong. He understood it to be letting go of all those things he thought were so important. The things he's put his comfort and his security in. How could he live life without them? And in the noise of his soul, he heard Jesus telling him, give it up. Lose what you have. What he could have heard was the offer Jesus made him to come and follow him. The most beautiful invitation anyone has ever been given. And yet the man understood it wrong because of all the other noise bouncing around in his heart. And it says, the gospel tells us, he went away sorrowful. You and I have that same voice of Christ speaking within our hearts right now and at every moment of our lives. What a beautiful gift. Our God doesn't demand us to go and journey somewhere to climb a mountain and enter a temple. Even to come into this beautiful temple, as wonderful as it is, God doesn't say, okay, I'll see you next week. This is the temple of God because we are the temple of God. In whatever way the structure of our hearts have been built up throughout our life that make it hard to hear God, let's work on it like we're doing today. It means changing things around. It means taking risks. We spent some money to do this. Is it going to help? We don't know. Hopefully it will. But that's what it takes if we're going to change and be able to hear the voice of God. Jesus said to us, the kingdom of God is within you. So let's work on the condition of our hearts. 
He is speaking to us infinitely good things, and he speaks them to us eternally. Every moment he speaks. Let's work on the acoustics, not just of our church, but of our hearts, that we could hear that voice of God that speaks to us now, and every moment it speaks to us of his truth, of the hope he offers us, and ultimately of his love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.